In this video we're going to look at the Log Rotate utility on Unix systems. Now Log Rotate is a tool that's used to ease the administration of systems that generate a large number of log files. And it does this by allowing automatic rotation of log files as well as additional features such as compression and removal of older backups. And these features are important on your servers. You don't want your log files to accumulate over time and take up a lot of disk space on the server. So a good rotation policy is very important for developers and system administrators. And we're going to explore how to achieve that with Log Rotate in this video. Now before we start, make sure to give the video a thumbs up on YouTube if you're enjoying this content. And also consider subscribing to the Better Stack channel for much more in the future. Now let's get started. Now we can start with a look at the Linux man page for Log Rotate. And as you can see here, Log Rotate, it rotates, it compresses and mails system logs on your Linux systems. And it's designed to ease the administration of systems that generate a large number of log files. And it does that with automatic rotation of log files as well as compression and removal of log files. And optionally as well, we can mail our log files to administrators as we rotate and delete those log files. And with Log Rotate, each log file might be handled daily, weekly, monthly, or optionally when it grows beyond a certain size. We're going to see examples of that in this video. And one other thing to point out here is that Log Rotate normally runs as a daily cron job. We'll see that later on as well. And we're also going to see how we can change that schedule and execute Log Rotate, for example, every hour using the cron service. Now we're going to also reference this better stack article. So let's jump over to that. And this is linked below the video in the description. And this is a complete guide to managing log files with Log Rotate. And in the top paragraph, we summarize why this is an important service to be aware of. As log files accumulate, they will consume valuable storage space and server resources, and this can cause performance and memory issues. And the solution to this is log rotation in general, and the log rotate utility on Linux is one of the best resources for handling this and easing that administration burden. So we're going to go to the left hand side. There's a tab here on why file based logging matters. Now when you have applications, typically they are going to log to different resources and sometimes they're going to log to files and sending your application logs to a file is often the first step towards persisting them and making them available for historical analysis auditing and troubleshooting. And even if you centralize your logs using Betterstack or other resources, you are often going to still use files in your ecosystem. And these log files are also going to be generated by services that you're using, for example, databases or web servers like Nginx and Apache, and even services like Cron itself. Now it's worth reading through this section here on why file based logging matters. As I said, it's linked below the video. Let's now move on to the next tab on this article. And after we read this, we're going to start looking at our Linux distribution. And we're going to start employing the log rotate service. Now, why do we need log rotation? Well, once you've started persisting your logs to local files, you're going to need to implement a process to keep individual files from becoming too large. And you're also going to need a way to remove or archive older log files that are no longer needed in order to free up that disk space on the server. So the idea of log rotation is to spread the log data over several files and also to remove older items. And that's to free up space on the disk. And log rotation as a process involves renaming log files on a predefined schedule or when the file reaches a predefined size. And typically an auto incrementing number or timestamp will be appended to the file name to indicate the time of rotation. And we're going to see how log rotate does that in a second. And after the file is renamed, a new log file with the same name is created to capture the latest entries from the application or the service. So let's now get started with log rotate. And as you can see here, the log rotate daemon is pre-installed and active by default in Ubuntu and in most mainstream Linux distributions. Now I'm going to bring up an Ubuntu terminal. And I've got the terminal open now. So let's check if log rotate is installed on this distribution. We can do that by using the log rotate command. And we're going to pass the dash dash version option to that. And we can see we have log rotate version 3.19 installed. And we get some options below here. For example, the default mail command is going to use this mail utility. And the default compress command will use the gzip utility and g unzip for uncompressing. Now we're going to look at the main log rotate configuration file here. And like in most Linux services, that configuration file is going to be in the slash etc directory. And I'm going to print out to the terminal the contents of this file. So we're going to use the cat command. And the name of the file is logrotate.conf. So let's execute this command and we get back the following output here. Now these are the main configuration options for the log rotate daemon. 
And in this file, we have global options and defaults for log rotate. So for example, we have a default log rotation schedule of weekly, and this can be changed to daily or monthly as well. We also have here the Linux user and group that is going to be used when performing log rotation. And as you can see by default, it's going to use the root user and the admin group. We have a rotate directive and we're setting that to a count of four. And what that means is that by default, we're going to keep four weeks worth of backlogs. So this works with the schedule of weekly here and we're specifying four weeks of rotated log files to be kept on the system. Once we have more than that, we are going to start deleting the older ones. So our log files in this case are going to be rotated four times before being removed or mailed to the address specified in the mail directive. And below here we have another option and that's the create option. So by default, what log rotate is going to do is it's going to create new empty log files after rotating the old ones. And finally, we have some options below here that are commented out. For example, if we want to use the date as the suffix of the rotated file, we can uncomment the date extension option. And we also have the ability to compress our log files as well. We can uncomment the compress option for that. And finally, we have a directory here, and that's the slash etc slash log rotate dot d directory. And we're including the contents of that directory in this main log rotate configuration file. Now we're gonna look at that directory now. So let's go back to the terminal and we're gonna CD into the log rotate.d directory and let's ls the contents of this directory. Now what we have here is the individual log rotate files for different services. So for example, if we use the Apache web server, we have a file here and this file is gonna tell log rotate how to configure the log rotation for Apache. So the file we looked at before, the logrotate.con file, that was the global file and it's including the contents of this directory where we have a file for individual services and we can see other ones here like our syslog. And we also have the UFW firewall in Linux as well. So we have different services here and each one of these has a log rotate configuration file that specifies the log rotation options for that service. Now let's look at one of these. We're gonna look at the Apache 2 service here. We're gonna look at the log rotate file for that. And what it does here is it defines a block of code and that's surrounded by these curly braces. And this directive here is gonna tell it where to apply that block of code, where to apply the options in that block. So what we're gonna do is look at the slash var slash log directory. And that directory is typically where Debian based systems are gonna store log outputs. And then we have an Apache 2 directory for the Apache web server itself. And any file that ends in .log, and we have that wildcard here, that means any file that ends in .log is going to have these options applied when log rotate is run. So we have daily rotation here, and we have an option that says missing OK. And what this means is that if the log file is missing, it's going to go on to the next log file without issuing an error message. And we also have the rotate 14 option. And that means we have a 14 day retention period for our rotated log files for the Apache service. And remember, this works in unison with the daily schedule here. So it's 14 of these days that we're going to keep the rotated log files on the system. After that 14 days, when we get the next log file, the next rotated file, what we're going to do is start removing the older ones. We also have the compress option, and this is very important because this can save a lot of space on your server. If you have a log file that's been rotated, that log file can be compressed, and if you ever need to read the contents of it, you can then uncompress it at a later date. We have the delay compress option. We're going to see exactly what that does later in the video as well. And we have not if empty, and this is a useful one as well. This means that the log files are not going to be rotated if they are empty. So for example, if Apache doesn't generate any logs on a given day, the log rotate command is not going to try and rotate that file if the given log file is empty on the day. And we can see some options here, for example, for ownership and for permissions. And I want to highlight these two options just below here. We have a pre-rotate and a post-rotate block. And these allow you to execute some custom logic or scripts before and after the log files are rotated. And we're going to see an example later on of defining a post-rotate block that's going to allow us to monitor log rotate on this system using BetterStack. So that's the configuration for the Apache service. So any logs that are generated at this location on the server are gonna have these options applied when the log rotate command is run. Let's quickly look at one more of these services and I'm gonna look at the rsyslog service here. So let's cat the contents of that one out and we're gonna see what's defined for this one. Now I'm not gonna go through all of these again. They're very similar options. You can see, for example, a weekly schedule and rotated every four weeks. 
But what I want to highlight is that you can apply that particular configuration to multiple files. So we have above the block definition here, multiple paths on the Linux system, for example, var log messages, var log debug. So for the R syslog service, when it's generating log outputs at these directories, for every single one of these, these particular options are going to be applied. And just for an analogy, this is quite similar to a CSS block that's applied to multiple selectors, although you would normally separate those with a comma, but in this case we have multiple locations and a block that defines the options for all of them. Now let's move on, we're gonna look at choosing the log rotation strategy. And again, let's go back to Better Stack now and we're gonna go to the article. And there's a section on the sidebar on choosing the appropriate log rotation strategy. The log rotate offers two directives that specify how the log rotation should be handled. We have create, which we saw earlier in the logrotate.conf file, and we also have an option of copy truncate. Now, because create was in the logrotate.conf file, this is the default, and this works by renaming a log file. And let's say we have a log file called myapp.log to myapp.log.1. After the file is renamed, it then creates a new myapp.log file, and that will be an empty file that's used to continue logging. So with the create strategy, we're gonna rename the log file that exists to this one here. And then after we've done that, we create a new empty log file with the original name, and that's where the new logs are gonna be sent. Now what about the copy truncate strategy? This one is slightly different, so if we scroll down here, we can see this paragraph. Now in copy truncate mode, what's gonna happen is that our log file is gonna be copied. So it's not gonna be renamed, it's gonna be copied to a new file with that dot one suffix. And then the original file, myapp.log, will be emptied or truncated, and that's where the name copy truncate comes from. And that allows the application to continue writing to it as if it were a new file. So this is a slightly different approach. Rather than renaming the original file, we make a copy of it with the desired name for the rotated file, and then we empty out the original file. That's the truncation process that's referenced in the name copy truncate. And all we need to do in order to do that is when we define our log rotate configuration, and this is for a particular service called myapp, we just specify the copy truncate command and it's gonna perform that strategy. And it's worth noting, as it says here, that copy truncate will avoid interrupting the logging process, but it may cause a brief period of log loss during the rotation process. And that's because the original file will be truncated, but this loss is usually acceptable for apps that don't rely on continuous log analysis. Now let's move on to a practical example, and we're gonna use the Apache service here. And as you can see, we have that Apache configuration file in the logrotate.d directory. Now Apache is a web server that's typically used to serve web applications. And I have that installed here and I can check that by looking at the service command. We're gonna specify the name of the service, which is Apache 2, and we can look at the status of that service. Now we get back this message that Apache 2 is not running, but that means that it is installed, it's just not running at the moment. We can start that service by using the start command. So let's run that and that's gonna start up the Apache HTTPD web server. And if we rerun the status command, we can see that it is now running. Now Apache runs on port 80 by default, so if I go back to the browser here, and we look at localhost, you can see we get back the Apache 2 default page here, and that means that Apache is running, and we can access the default page here on localhost. And what's gonna happen when we send requests to this page, is that Apache will write logs into what's called an access log file on our Ubuntu system. Now we can look at those logs directly by going back to the terminal, and I'm gonna clear this output here. And what we're gonna do is cd into the var slash log file and into the Apache 2 directory within that, and let's list out everything in that directory. Now you can see we have the access log here and also an error log, and I can look at the contents of that directory. For example, if I look at the tail command, and we're gonna specify the follow option here, we're gonna look at the access.log file, and we can see the most recent logs here, and these logs correspond to requests made to Apache web server. And we can see these coming in in real time. So I'm gonna go back to the browser and I'm gonna minimize this browser. And I'm now gonna send a request here and we're gonna see that the logs start coming in each time I refresh the page. And that's because a new web request is coming into Apache and it's gonna write all of those to its access logs. Now you can imagine for a particularly large service, a large web application, those log files are going to grow in size very quickly as you have a number of users accessing the page. And again, that comes back to why log rotate is important. We need a mechanism for taking these logs and rotating the files and deleting older logs that we no longer need. And that's exactly what log rotate will do. 
Now what I'm going to do is bring up another Ubuntu terminal here and we can use the tmux command for that and that stands for terminal multiplexer. So let's run that command and we get back the terminal and what we can do is we can split the screen into two sections. So I'm going to do that now and you can see we now have a second pane on the right hand side. Now we're on the right hand side here and if we ls that directory you can see we're still in the Apache log directory and we can switch between these different terminals. So for example I'm now on the left hand side and again we're still in that Apache directory. So on the left hand side what I want to do is keep the Apache directory open with our log files here. On the right hand side what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the directory containing our Apache log rotate configuration. So that was slash etc slash log rotate dot d and we're going to go to that directory and if we ls the contents we have our apache log rotate file here now we're going to edit that file and to do that i'm going to use the nano editor in linux so let's go to apache 2 here and we're going to view the contents of that file so we're now in the log rotate file for the apache service and what i'm going to do is go to the rotate option and i'm going to reduce that down from 14 to 2 for demonstration purposes so what we're saying here is that we want to rotate the log files daily and after two days we want to start removing the older rotated files. So we essentially have a retention period of two days of our rotated log backups. And what we can do after we've changed that option is we can save the modified file and go back to the system. And when we look at the contents of the Apache 2 file we can see we now have two days of rotation in that file. So let's clear the terminal. Now what we want to do is we want to run the log rotate service and we want to force it to rotate the log files in the Apache directory. So what we're going to do on the right hand side is we're going to use the sudo log rotate command and I'm going to pass an option to that and that's dash dash force. And once we've done that we can point log rotate towards our Apache configuration. So it's going to be the Apache 2 file in the log rotate.d directory and that's going to apply the log rotation to any files that are specified in that configuration. So let's run this. And once we've run that, I'm gonna go back to the other terminal on the left hand side, and we're gonna list out the directory contents, and we're gonna see something different now. And I've resized these terminals so we can see this better. At the bottom, we have our access.log file as before, but unlike above here, we now can see that that has zero bytes of data. So the access.log file has been cleared out, it's been emptied, and we now have a rotated log file called access.log.1. So what's happened here is that the contents of our access log, they have been copied to this access.log.1 file. This is the rotated file. And our access log has been recreated and that is now an empty file. And that is where Apache is going to start sending the logs to when we get any more access requests. And you can see that the same has happened for the error.log file. We have the original file and we also have a rotated file here with the dot one suffix. And the reason this is applied to both of these, if we go back to the terminal on the right hand side, if we cat out the Apache 2 configuration, you can see that this block is applied to any file that ends in dot log. And on the left hand side, we have an error.log file and also an access.log file. So all of these configurations will be applied to both of these. And when log rotate finds the files in this directory, it's going to apply those to all of them. And we have as well another file at the bottom, and that's the other vhosts access.log file. And that has not been rotated. And the reason for that is because of this directive here, not if empty. This means that if the file is empty, we're not going to perform the rotation. Now let's clear out the terminal on the right hand side and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the browser and generate more access requests and that's so that the access.log file will fill up with some data. So let's go back to the browser and I'm going to refresh this page a few times. Let's go back to the terminal and we're going to list out the contents of this directory again and we can see that our access log now contains some log entries. So what we can do on the right hand side is run the log rotate command again. So it's sudo log rotate and we're using the dash force option. And again, we're pointing towards our Apache configuration. So let's run this and go back to the other terminal. And when we ls this directory, we again get some new output. So again, the access log has been cleared out. It's been truncated. We are now at zero bytes. And we now have two rotated files. And the second one, which is the oldest one, is now compressed to a gzip file. So we have our access.log.1 file, that's the most recently rotated file. And we also have our access.log.2 file, which has now been compressed to gzip. And that compression has reduced the number of bytes here from 1802 down to 291. So that can highlight some of the space savings on your server if you apply compression to the rotated log files.
Now the question is why has this been compressed to gzip but the other one has not? And we can answer that again by going back to our Apache 2 configuration for log rotate. So I've cleared out the terminal on the left and resized these a little bit. Let's cat out the Apache 2 configuration and it's this setting here, this directive that says delay compress. What this means is that when we rotate the main log file, that will be copied to a new file, but it will not be compressed the first time that that happens, but any subsequent files that are generated will be compressed. Now we're gonna run the log rotate command one more time, but I want to highlight this before we do. We are taking daily rotations here. This directive means that we want to create two rotations of our log files before we start deleting the oldest files. So let's clear the terminal on the right. And again, I'm gonna resize these windows a little bit so that we can see things better. And if we list out the contents on the left-hand side, you can see we have our access.log.2 file, which is gzip, and note the timestamp here of 1327. I'm gonna go back to the right-hand side and we're gonna run the log rotate command one more time. And if we go back to the terminal on the left and list out the directory contents, we can see now that our access.log file here, the second one, this rotated file has a different timestamp and the original file has now been removed and that's because of that rotate to option. We already have two rotations here so what's going to happen is it's going to take the oldest one, it's then going to remove that from the server and it's going to copy the contents of the first rotation into this gzipped one here and the newly rotated access.log.1 file that's going to come from the original access log. Let's now move on to another part of the video. We're gonna look at how log rotate is run and it's run using the cron service on Linux. So I'm gonna get out of the tmux service here and we're going to go back to our normal terminal. And if we go back to the browser here, what I'm gonna do is go back to the log rotate man page. And it was this section here, log rotate is run as a daily cron job. That's the normal way in which log rotate is run. And we can actually see that on Ubuntu. If we go back to the terminal, what we're going to do is go to the slash etsy directory and I'm going to use the ls command with the dash dl option and we're going to look at all directories that start with cron in the slash etc directory and we can see we get five of these as well as the cron tab file itself. We have a cron.d directory but we also have these scheduled directories for daily, hourly, monthly and weekly jobs. Now what I'm going to do is go to the cron.daily directory and again let's ls the contents of this directory. And this directory contains scripts that run every day and they're scheduled to run by the cron service on Linux. And note that we have one for log rotate here. And this is going to run the log rotate utility every day and that's automatically gonna handle generating those rotated log files and also removing any log files that are scheduled to be deleted. Now, if you want to change the schedule, for example, rather than a daily schedule, we can go back here and re-execute the ls-dl command. You might want to execute log rotate every hour. All you need to do is move that log rotate script into that directory, and that's then going to apply that cron job every hour. And that can be helpful if you specify an hourly schedule in your log rotate configurations. So let's see an example of moving that now. I'm gonna run the sudo mv command, and the mv command allows you to move a file from one location to another in a Unix file system. So we're gonna move the file from the cron.daily directory, and the name of the file or the script was log rotate. We're gonna move that into the cron.hourly directory. So if we now cd into cron.hourly, and if we list out the contents of this directory, we now have our log rotate script, and that means it's gonna be scheduled every hour using the cron service. Let's now move on to the final part of the video. We're gonna look at how to monitor our log rotations using BetterStack. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Log Rotate provides the ability to run a custom piece of logic before and after the log rotations have happened. And to see that, let's go back to the slash etc slash logrotate.d directory. And we're gonna ls this directory. And what we're gonna look at here is the Apache 2 configuration as before. And we're gonna look at these two directives, pre-rotate and post-rotate. Now in order to monitor this with BetterStack, what we're gonna do is we're going to add some code to the post rotate block, and that code is gonna send a curl request to BetterStack to inform the BetterStack heartbeat that we're gonna set up that everything has run as expected. So to start with, let's go back to the browser, and we're gonna to go to BetterStack here, and we're gonna set up a heartbeat. Now a BetterStack heartbeat allows you to track your cron jobs and any serverless workers, and you can get alerts if they don't run as expected. So let's create this heartbeat just now. 
and the service that we're going to use here is a log rotate demo let's just call it that and we're expecting a heartbeat every hour and that's because we've moved the log rotate command into that cron.hourly directory so it's going to run every hour using the cron service so we expect the heartbeat every hour and we can define a small grace period of five seconds. And what happens if we don't get that heartbeat is we can set up some rules for escalation, for example, to send a phone call or an SMS, an email or a push notification. And that's gonna notify your on-call person whenever these issues occur, whenever an incident is raised on the platform. So let's now create the heartbeat. And what we're gonna get back here is a URL. I'm gonna copy that URL to the clipboard. And as you can see on the UI, we're now waiting to receive the first heartbeat from our service. If we go back to the terminal now, what I'm gonna do is edit this Apache 2 log rotate configuration. So let's do that now with sudo nano, and we're going to edit the Apache 2 configuration file. Now let's get down to that post rotate block at the bottom. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add a second piece of code after this if statement. And this is gonna be a very simple curl command, and that's gonna send a web request, and we want to send it to the heartbeat URL that we copied to the clipboard. So let's paste that URL in here, and that's gonna send a get request to that URL, and we can save the modified file and go back to our terminal. Once we've done that, we can execute the log rotate command. So we're gonna run sudo log rotate, and I'm gonna point this to the Apache 2 configuration file. Let's run this, and we get back the terminal, but if we go to the browser now, we should be able to refresh this page and see that we have now got a heartbeat that's been recorded and you can see that here in the system. It was recorded 11 seconds ago and we can see our recorded heartbeats appearing in this chart. So what happens here is that when we run the log rotate command and when we point it to the Apache 2 configuration which we have here, because of this post rotate block we are now sending a curl request after our log rotate command has rotated the files in the Apache service and that's sending that curl request to Betterstack and therefore we can track these heartbeats in Betterstack and if we stop receiving them every hour, our administrators are then gonna be notified and then they can go onto the system and they can resolve that issue. And that's all for this video. We've seen the essentials of the log rotate command in Unix systems and we've seen how it rotates log files according to configuration options that we specify on a per service basis. If you're interested in any further log rotate videos, for example with custom applications, let us know in the comments and don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the Better Stack channel. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.